So in John 3, 1, it says, now a certain man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, so he was a Pharisee like Paul, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he's the top. He's part of the leadership team. Not only is he a Pharisee, he's part of their leadership team of the Jerusalem ruling council. They made all the decisions. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi. So that right there you know that the word rabbi means teacher. We know that you're a teacher who's come from God. Wow. So something about Jesus influenced this man. Jesus was contagious. So contagious that a religious ruler, a Pharisee, would come at night and call him rabbi, claiming that he knew he was from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. So although he's not a convert yet, he's impressed. There's a concept that we have right in our society that says when something goes viral. We have a song, uh, we, we did Uptown Funk for one of our uh, uh, conferences, and it's gone viral. It's over a million and what are two million, whatever it is, have, have seen our Uptown Funk with our team singing and dancing and hilarious. Uh, it's gone viral. So going viral means that there's a mass bigger influence from one to 10 to 20 to 100 to 1,000 or 10,000 or 50,000. So I believe that a contagious Christian will go viral. I believe a contagious Christian will go from just being one little person on an island to being someone that impacts society as a whole. And uh, sometimes it's the least likely person. Whether it's a Paul who's a persecutor of the church or a Nicodemus who was a religious leader who didn't quite get it. So Jesus replied to him, I tell you the truth. Unless a person is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> now, this is a dangerous assertion by Jesus. Here's this guy really saying nice things. Hey, Rabbi, <laughs> I know you're from God because you're doing miracles. And Jesus says, hey, listen, <laughs> a person who's not born from above can't enter a kingdom of God. It's like he comes to him putting up the hand and Jesus says, I'm going to give you a little truth bomb here. Hey, unless you've been born from above, you can't enter the kingdom of God. That's not a politically correct statement. So verse four, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born from when he's old? He cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time, can he? Verse five, and Jesus said, I tell you the solemn truth. Unless a person is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So put yourself in his place. He's a Pharisee, which means basically they did everything right. Secondly, he's part of the top ones where he was ruling Jerusalem and the religious community at the time. I mean, he had all the credentials to make it to heaven. My mom uh, suffers uh, in and out of uh, dementia. She's 98 years old. She's going home, and we just don't know when she's going to go. But she says, oh, honey, I don't know if I deserve heaven. I said, mom, nobody deserves heaven. I said, the only reason you go to heaven, mom, is not because you've earned it, although my mom's amazing. I said, it's because of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, what, what Nicodemus did, he did all the right things, but relationally, he had not been born of the spirit. Verse six, what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it will and you'll hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from and where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Someone say born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus couldn't wrap his brain around it, so he goes, hey, how can these things be? And Jesus answered, are you the teacher of Israel, yet don't understand these things? I tell you solemnly the truth. We speak about what we know and testify about what we've seen, but you people do not accept our testimony. Now he's confronting him. Another, bam, truth bomb. If I told you people about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe it when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. Big statement there declaration that he was a son of man, which had been prophesied for thousands of years. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the son of man will be lifted up, prophesying about his crucifixion. 
so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Or do you believe in religion? For this is the way God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Is your Christianity contagious? Are people asking you about your faith? I, 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 you, you know the story about Shaba, so we, I made Shaba bracelets. We made Shaba t-shirts and coffee cups because I want people to look at Shaba and go, what does it mean that I'm able to testify? I want them to look at my life and go, how did you get the way you are? Why is it that you are the way you are? I want my life to shine and reflect upon Jesus. See, that's a, a viral Christian. It's someone that's not going from church to church or conference to conference looking for their next high. These are Christians that are becoming viral because they're tapped in to the source. Do you carry a cure that can heal humanity? Has it gone viral yet? Has anyone been curious about why you are the way you are? Have they ever asked you about the antidote, the thing that fixed you can actually fix them? That's what really got me going this week. What virus are you carrying? See, Nicodemus carried a religious virus. It won't get him to heaven. Yesterday, someone told me that they went to a religious a place for many, many years. In the last two years, they've come to this church because the husband says, I wanted the meat. She just loved the presence of God. It drew them to this church. They've gone from loving religion, which is not a bad thing, to really loving Jesus Christ and having a relationship with him. See, what happens is we, people around the world are all carrying a virus, and we're the only ones that have the antidote. You say, that sounds arrogant. That's just what Jesus said. Unless you're born of the Spirit, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. So when you read the word, and I was reading it with my grandson, I talked about who this Nicodemus was. He saw something in Jesus that caused him to ask a question about their faith, like the Shabbat does. It makes people ask a question. Because Jesus was contagious. He, in fact, the Bible says he was the Christ, the anointed one. Are people walking by you and feeling your anointing? Are they spending time with you going, what is your secret? Man, what's your secret? A lot of times people look at my wife and said, how'd you get those guns? <laughs> Her big muscles. What's your secret, ma'am? And people come in the store, what's your secret? People look at me, what's your secret? Why are you like the way you are? Because I've got the anointed one inside of me and I've gone viral. I'm the antidote because I carry Christ. I've got the antidote in my pocket, my heart, my brain. So I want to talk about how to go viral as a contagious Christian. Hey, I'm Paul Margoulet. Welcome to this incredible series called Contagious Christianity. What happens when a Christian is so on fire, so anointed, so empowered, so healthy, that literally other people rub off on you and they get a little bit more like you? Because they want to be a little bit more like Jesus. It's going to be insane. Join this series, listen to it every week, and spread it to everybody else. That's what contagious Christianity is all about. Let's head back there to ICLV right now. Have you been born from above? Think about contagious, on, uh, on Tuesday I leave for France. We're gonna train leaders in the south of France, then I'm gonna meet with leaders in, in, uh, in the Alps of France, and then I'm gonna meet, train leaders in Paris. Paris has had 17 weeks of riots, and I'm going right into that area to train leaders. I believe that God's raising us up. At the end of the service, we're gonna uh, pray for Naomi and Micaiah. Where are they, Naomi and Micaiah? We're gonna lay hands on them at the end of service because they're gonna be leaving in a few weeks and I'm, not, I'm gonna be over there already. We're gonna lay hands on them and send them back. They wanna start a Kairos Europe, a school of ministry in Europe. They're gonna kill it. And, and she's gonna finish her, her training and counseling. This couple is amazing. They're coming, they came here for three months, why? They wanna catch what ICLV has. They want to catch this anointing that's rocking the city and rocking uh, uh, Nevada and, and rocking the U.S. Jesus wants us to go viral, but the only way we can go viral is if we're born from above. Do you believe that he was telling the truth? If you're not born from above, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. See, I believe the truth can become viral. When someone shared with me the gospel, 
I can honestly say it became viral inside of me. I couldn't shake John 3, 16. I couldn't shake John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give me life and life more abundant. I couldn't shake that scripture. It was inside of me. The minute my ears heard it, my brain heard it, my heart heard it, it started working on me. Why? Because the word of God is living and active and sharper than an edged sword. Two-edged sword. What? Truth becomes viral. Someone say truth will make me viral. You're going to become viral. I really believe it. I, I don't believe you're going to win one person to Christ. I believe you're going to lead 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 1,000. It's according to your faith. I prayed 20 years for my dad to get saved. And one day I led him to the Lord. I, I could just tell you story after story after story. It was my faith. God is looking for people that have faith who believe in the truth and the truth will be viral. Here's my next point. Nick, Nick, Nicodemus couldn't understand the cure. Look at, look at he says this. He, could, he says, hey, how can a man be born when he's old? Can't enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. When you look at this story about Nicodemus, he couldn't wrap his brain around the antidote. I'll never forget when they sat with me and after I was sick and they said, you need to change what you eat. And I said, what can I eat? They said, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. I said, then I'm going to starve to death. Because that's all I ate, Ron. I just, I eat all that stuff. I went to the doctor again yesterday and, and they looked at what I was eating and they said, man, you gotta ch still change your eating. Because I kind of, I slacked off a little bit. I was feeling better, so I slacked off. So now I gotta get back and be more disciplined about eating organic and doing the right thing if, with food. And oh, goodness gracious. So, so I, I, I realized yesterday it was another wake up call. But it's for me, I couldn't wrap my brain around it because I was raised eating donuts. I was raised going and picking up bottles from the, the, the park and trading in bottles for pennies so I could buy candy. That's the gospel truth. I, 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 had, I board my friend's wagon, we go around parks and pick up bottles from the garbage cans and, and the ground and we put them in the cart and we bring them to the local store, trade them in for a cent or two cents a bottle and then we just buy candy. So for me to eat well is not, I gotta wrap my brain around it. It's like people working out. Some people just don't get it. You gotta work out five times a week, 20 minutes a day at least for you to start making a difference. See, but people can't wrap their brain around that because we're used to playing games and sitting there and, sit, and even working. We sit and work and we, then we play and work and we watch and work. We're entertained and to get up and go out it's like a brain cramp. No, I told someone the other day, I said, you know, you, well, I'm dieting. I said, that's great. I said, but you know you're going to have to work out. It's what? I got to work out? Huh? It's like Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Work out. But Nicodemus went, born, to the, born from above? Jesus drops another bomb in verse 5. He says this. This is so powerful. I, I hope, see, I, when was the last time you studied John chapter three? It's so killer. And Jesus said, I, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a poor person is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I said, I said, Van, what does that mean, water and spirit? He goes, Papa, I don't know. I said, well, when you're born in your, from your mama's womb, there's fluid in there. We, we call it, she lost her water. Her, so, so that water surrounds a baby until it's time of birth. Then the, the, the lady loses her water. And I said, you're born of water and then of the spirit. You're born of the flesh, then of the spirit. So how many of you were born of water? Lift up your hand. That means we came out of our mother's womb. Some of you aren't sure. Lift up your hand, please. <laughs> Unless you're aliens and let's not get into that. <laughs> You won't even get into that. But the point is, is that we've all been born of water. Now the question is, have you been born of the Spirit? That's the question. Not if you go to church. Not even if you read your Bible. Not if you do all the right things and go to a Christian school. And it's, are you born of the Spirit? Have you ever been born of the Spirit? So I'm sitting there with my, my grandson and I, I said, Van, have you been born of the Spirit? He says, yeah. I said, well, how old are you when you're born of the Spirit? He says, Papa, I think I was five years old. And you know, when I look at his life, I really believe that, Paul. 
I believe as a five-year-old, he truly received Christ as his Savior, and I believe he was born of the Spirit. This kid is amazing, way better than I was at 10. At 10, oh my goodness, I mean, but he's been born of the Spirit, I can tell by his character. Little Jag standing up there. I look at these kids who are in first grade picking up the mic and her name's Rory. I call her Rory McElroy. She doesn't like it when I do that, but I won't do that anymore after she picked up that mic and, and just saying, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'll just call her Rory the Queen or something because that kid's amazing. But first grade, first grade. See, the spirit will make you and I viral. Look at verse six. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse eight, the wind blows wherever it will and you hear the sound it makes but you don't know where it comes from and where it is going. It is with everyone who's born of the spirit. First service, the team played the wrong video. What did I do? I didn't freak out because the order was broken. I thought, let's just go with it. The first offering is gonna be the bless the school. Why, because I'm led by the spirit. I can think on my feet. I can think on my knees, especially. Hey, I don't care. I, I ha we have a plan every Sunday, but a lot of times we go, what? And what? And people say, where's pastor going? All the perfectionists are freaking out. You're freaking me out, pastor. Hey, listen, perfectionism won't get me to heaven. You know what will get me to heaven? The spirit. I'm spirit led. I'm spirit empowered. I can think on my feet. I can walk into a business meeting and feel anointed. I remember, it's so funny, I'm, I'm kneeling there. And when Denise is praying about the businesses, I see 10 times growth. And Mark, for you and Christine, 10 times growth. Now, that sounds great. Yippee! We all were, yes, 10 times. But then I started thinking, okay, how do I, Lord, what, what's my part in 10 times growth? Do I need more staff? Do I need a better strategy? Do I need better protocol? Are there better, more, more marketing, more policy? I, I'm literally on my knees going, all right, if you're proclaiming 10 times, then what does Paul Goulet have to do for my life, for this church? Imagine 10 times where we are right now. We're already around the world. <laughs> I, I leave on Tuesday and, and we're going to train another hundreds and hundreds of leaders in France and they're all going to become healthy believers and they're going to start teaching in their churches. Healthy believers is about to go viral. We've, we've impacted a lot, but now it's going to go viral because now I'm training trainers. And uh, I talked to Greg just two days ago. He says, oh yeah, we, we'll have 100 to 200 each place. And then on Sunday mornings, you're going to have thousands. And we're going to just train them up, raise them up, and send them out. See, the beautiful thing is when you go viral, it's because you're led by the Holy Spirit. He gives you divine strategies that are actually really practical. So yeah, we love the prophecies, but then the next question is how, when, why, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Jesus says, don't be amazed at this because someone that's full of the Spirit, we don't know where they're going to come or they're going, so it's everyone who's born of the Spirit. See, you can go to a lot of churches where everything is perfect down to the second. I went to one famous church on way in the other side of the world and, and I was sitting next to the person that was the service coordinator and they had every part of the service down to the Minute! Minute! And nothing varied. It, was, it didn't vary at all. It was, just, it was a beautiful program. And it really was a beautiful program. I liked it. It's a famous church now. Well, I went when it was really small, but they had a beautiful program, well planned, well choreographed, and it really was great. But when you're led by the Spirit, there's got to be freedom of movement. Praying for the sick, uh, 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 speaking into businesses, uh, praying over the kids, whatever that might be. You've got to be led by the Spirit to become really viral. Someone say amen to that. Amen. Someone say the spirit makes me viral. Makes me viral. No, I, I, if you want to live prophetically, that means if he tells you you're going to be 10 times bigger and 10 times more influence, the question is how do you get from here to here? Well, of course, obviously it's the spirit and he's going to help you put wheels to this dream. I want to talk about just for a second about spiritual blindness. I call it spiritual glaucoma. And you see it here in verse 9. Nicodemus said, how can these things be? Still couldn't wrap his brain around any. I mean, here's a religious leader. And Jesus answered, are you the teacher of Israel? Yet you don't understand these things? I tell you the solemn truth. We speak about what we know and testify about what we've seen. But you people don't even accept our testimony. If I told you people about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Bam. He starts dropping these bombs. Why? Because Nicodemus was a successful person in the world's eyes, but he had spiritual glaucoma. I had my eyes tested two weeks ago. 
because I didn't know what happened after I was sick and whether my eyesight was affected in any way. And I got a really clean bill of health. It was really glorious. They took pictures of the inside. And it's really kind of cool when you see this. And, and they said, no glaucoma, no this, no that. I was like, yes, my eyes are good. Now, as long as the rest of my body cooperate, I'm in good shape. How many of your friends and family have received Christ? Because if they haven't received Christ, they're still blind. They can have 50 cars and five mansions. They can live the lifestyle of the rich and famous, but if they don't have Christ. I don't know if you've seen the rash of suicides in movie stars and models and porn stars and famous people in our society. Did you notice this? I read it all the time. And, and one by one, 32, I just read two of those yesterday, a 32-year-old killed a, a model, a TV star, killed herself, and, and, or at least thought, we know she died, we, we assume she killed herself. Just all these people that have everything in the world, but they're not spiritually alive. Don't envy someone for being super successful on earth if you know that spiritually they may be dead. Because the Bible says unless they're born of the Spirit, they're dead spiritually. They have spiritual glaucoma. Let's just face it, friends. Jesus says it right here. Either he's a liar, a lunatic, or he's telling the truth. He spoke about a heaven. He spoke about a hell. And he said the only way you can see the kingdom of heaven is if you're born from above. We should make sure today that we're all born from above. If there's even one shred of doubt, are you willing to take a chance? I'm not. If you're watching online, you say, I really don't know if I'm born from above. <laughs> Why don't you make sure? It's not complicated, it's, it's really quite, God made it quite evident. 